an event organized for the UN members on the theme of being one world family. This conversation includes two panelists, Her Excellency Ruchira Kamboj, the permanent representatives of India to the UN, and BK Jayanti Didi, the additional head of Rama Kumaris. And it was moderated by Ramu Damodaran, the first chief of United Nations Academic Impact. BK Gayatri and BK Sabita were also present in this event. There were close to 60 members gathered for the conversation with representatives from permanent missions in Argentina, Guyana and Mauritius. Other participants included UN staff, NGOs and New York community members. The dialogue touched different aspects of humanity and spirit. Deep questions were posed by the audience. Sister Jayanti focused on the spiritual perspective of the theme, indicating that it is our spiritual bond that allow us to rise above the physical and come together as one family. As well, Ambassador Ruchira Kamboj drew attention to the need to inspire youth and ignite this inner light amongst everyone. The Brahma Kumaris have often talked about very eloquently about the self transformation of individuals. From your experience working with the United Nations and in Geneva. Do you think it's possible to have a self transformation of organizations as well? Um for me transformation then means that you're able to transform the negative into the pure and positive because I believe that the being that we are is actually when it begins its journey it's completely pure and wholesome and very beautiful it's filled with truth and then through our journey we tend to accumulate dust and debris along the way and so the process of self transformation is to remove that and come back to that original state of being and so i see how i can speak for our own organization um the founder was man from abava and when he passed on by constitution now all our leaders are women uh, we have brothers and so we have men very much as part of our organization but it's always women who head the organization and there are good reasons for that also but um, what i found was that that Prakash Muni who was to the UN several times and then after her that Jan Ki who came many many times yet um they qualities of integrity and honesty and commitment to peace and respect for all making themselves available for all all of these qualities plus a lot more that i haven't listed but they embodied these qualities and i'm sure that there are many around this room um who did meet them and can validate what i'm saying and so because that one leader represented the organization and embodied these qualities that set the culture of the whole organization and that continues to today so i know for a fact that of organizations where they have leadership that has those qualities definitely that process of transformation becomes an example for everyone you see human being say abstract is wonderful but it's only when you see somebody in reality and they demonstrate something they become a role model then you say that yes this works and i as a human being you can do the same and so i think that definitely organizations can also follow in that way i definitely agree with peace harmony unity but i was thinking as a teacher educator we also need to inspire children and what are we doing in terms of schools and uh, how to inspire how to instill that and ignite that fire among children is united nations going to and brahmak mari is going to take an active role in that No I think you're absolutely right and uh, certainly uh, if you wish to be forward looking you have to look at the youth and uh, instill the right values the very values that we're all talking about in this room and certainly yes I think the United Nations uh, education is a topic that comes up it is also a goal uh, and individually nations are looking to their own systems to see that you know youth carry the ideals and value system forward what is the kind of system that is missing to bring to link this uh realm of ethics into the reality i believe that's 
kind of question that we are raising in different ways in this room. Sister Genti, could you enlighten us? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your response, Ambassador. Um, I think that although individually we think about these things, yet we don't often come together to speak about spiritual values and spirituality as a whole, because these are not words that really are used to the vocabulary of the UN so often, so spirituality is very rarely used, but even words like love, um, it's not a word that's often used. But I think that if people who do believe in these things support each other, then I think that the unity of those people themselves can allow the power of that to grow and expand further so that it is translated into action also. So on the one side is my own spiritual discipline that I follow, but when I connect with you and with others, then it means that that energy is multiplied and it's expanded and it can reach out further. So I think that we're in the process and it'll happen. I'm very hopeful that it'll happen very soon. I can ask you, Sister Jayanti, the idea of an individual's, well, not just responsibility, but ability to change not only her life, but the life of those around her, the project um, life that um, the Prime Minister of India launched last October, right? Uh, is that something that you can relate to, the power of the individual to make that change? Absolutely. Everything begins with one. And we've seen that within our own organization. One person has a vision of a better world and understands that it's through spiritual education that there can be a better world. And others have followed in that way, understanding those principles and working with them. Um, what happens today is that because we've forgotten our own spiritual identity and that dignity that we carry within ourselves, we become a little bit hopeless and helpless. And so we feel that, you know, what can I do? What difference can I make? And yet, of course, one individual can have an impact on a minimum level of 125. So we believe very deeply and sincerely that um, one individual transformation is going to impact many others and you reach a certain level of critical mass. And once you've reached critical mass, the majority uh, begins to understand these ideas and follow in the same way. So I think that the light that's entering the world at the present time, the consciousness of holistic living, the understanding of our codependency as human beings or each other, working together for the environment, um, working together in so many different ways. I think that all the problems that we face as a human family, all of those can be eliminated and dealt with through the awareness of this inner light. And as we begin to understand and experience and then experiment with it, I think that each one of us has a huge impact on others around us and there can be a transformation of the world. I hold a vision of hope that we're going through a period of darkness which is coming to its end. And what lies ahead of humanity is definitely a world of light, a better world for all. I, Rahu, can I say that I fully agree with Sister Jayanti because as they say, in every atom lies the seeds of transformation. Thank you, thank you for that. And I must say that uh, looking at the eyes in this room, I think both you, Ambassador, and you, Sister Jayanti, have lit many candles here this morning. What emerged from this conversation that it is the individual that needs to change and create a critical mass for transformation in our world. I'm sure all of us, each one of you are leaving today uh, with this conviction that we are going to advocate for a better world. Mm -hmm.